Insufficient atresia or tracheosuffusal fistula. I mean, obviously, here we have a significant uh, anatomical problem. There may be polyhydramnios antenatally. The baby typically presents with frothing secretions, and respiratory distress may happen if the baby has aspirated already. And typically, in such a baby with frothing, when we try to pass the feeding tube, there is difficulty. Either there is resistance and it coils up or it doesn't go into the stomach. And we need to do an x ray with the coil feeding tube to confirm. And uh, we need to avoid CPAP in these babies if possible, especially the ones with the fistula, as the gas enters the stomach, but it's not possible to decompress it. So, better to intubate these babies as you would bypass the fistula and the air may not enter the stomach as much. And we have a commonest type where there is esophageal atresia in both with the distal fistula, which is 87%, and esophageal atresia with blind pouches on both sides, 8%. And these can be uh, type 1 or type 2, where the distance is short or long. The H type uh, fistula. Uh, which is rare, but diagnosed later, usually with aspiration pneumonia, and you may need a visualization of the airway, uh, either by bronchoscope or with contrast studies to pick up this condition. So the blind pouch is one of the most difficult conditions to manage as the gap may be wide as well, and uh, you may need staged procedures in these babies. So here the feeding tube is stopping short here. You can see gas in the stomach, which means there is a fistula. We should be aware of the replogal tube, which is a special catheter, which allows continuous subsuction. And it's very important to place it at the right position at the blind end of the upper esophageal pouch. So you can use the measurement uh, with X-ray. And when the baby is uh, having a stage procedure and stays in the unit longer, we need to repeat the X-ray at. Uh, seven to ten day intervals and adjust this position so it's a bottom end. Uh, when these babies have a surgery, the post-operative care is very important as well. You should be very careful to avoid accidental extubation as intubation process can stretch the anastomosis and lead to problems or the transanastomotic tube which is passed through the esophageal anastomosis. If it slips out, it can cause problems as well. So nursing should be very careful in these babies. This is a replogal tube and you have uh, two uh, pathways. So one to attach to the suction tubing, which gives a continuous suction. Usually we start with 15 millimeter mercury. The maximum is 25 to 30. And you can have a blue tube on the side where you can push saline to wash out if it is blocked. You have multiple holes at the end. There is a uh, soft uh, end, so it doesn't hurt the airway as well. 